joins us live from Decatur High School to tell us how Giovanni Pena's loved ones are coping with the sudden and unexpected loss. Trisha, what a tragedy here. Yeah, Erica, his friends tell me coming into school just doesn't feel the same without Giovanni. Tonight, his loved ones are remembering his big personality and kind and loving heart. He was a really great person. He never did anything bad. He was just amazing, always happy person. But he'd always look after others. He never, never put himself first. He was always caring. Giovanni Pena was 18. A senior at Decatur High School, he lost his battle with COVID-19 on Thursday night. Coming to school, waking up knowing our friends not here with us is crazy. Um, not seeing his car at school, it's crazy. Loved ones share stories of the outgoing person Giovanni was. His brother Juan says Gio wanted to become an engineer after high school. He told me he was happy to graduate. He had a goal to graduate. He had a goal to play sports his last year. He was ready to go into the real world. His friends remember him as the leader of the pack, the one who would always make them smile. He was a really good friend. He Such was, a good kid with a good heart, man. He cared about people so much. Giovanni's friends say he liked cars, video games, and Star Wars. He was also an athlete playing football and wrestling. He was really competitive, um, so I had him for middle school football, and he worked his way into the starting lineup right away. He's an athletic kid, really strong. We were um, side by side next to each other, offense, defense, tackling guard. So it's, it's really hard knowing that um, he's not here. Giovanni's teachers remember him as the loud one in the classroom, but a sweet soul to all. He was so kind. You know, he, he put on this big tough guy persona kind of thing, but really, he was one of the kindest students I've ever had. Giovanni's family is planning to celebrate his life with a memorial service and funeral this Friday. I've known him my entire life. Growing up, he was my brother, too. Losing him was one of the hardest things that I have to endure. Giovanni's family tells me he was not vaccinated but was planning on getting the shot before he got COVID-19. His brother and cousin say they want everyone to take this virus very seriously so no one has to go through the pain that their family is going through right now. Several hundred students at one West Michigan school district forced to quarantine due to COVID-19 exposure during the first month of school. Changes in state health rules mean schools with mask mandates don't require exposed kids to stay home. News Channel 3's Mike Cravesick joins us live in cold water, cold water to explain how the district is looking to take matters into its own hands. Yeah, Erica, and just today, the superintendent here in Coldwater is trying to figure out how many more students will have to be quarantined after four positive tests here in the last few days. Branch County health officials won't put a mask mandate in place. They tell me it's up to the local districts to decide. Coldwater schools are now asking parents if the district should have a mask mandate. It's an effort to get the pulse of how the Coldwater community feels about masks. If it's something that we need to do, we need to do. Coldwater Community Schools District Survey giving parents two options. Continue without a mask mandate with the possibility of a large number of students quarantining or require masks, allowing kids without COVID-19 to stay in school. I know it's a big controversy right now, but a lot of parents are throwing it up because why is the... Why are they only giving the parents two options? At the first five weeks of the school year, Coldwater Superintendent says 59 students have tested positive for COVID-19. She says nearly 800 have had to quarantine, including Larissa Vorce's daughter. With her being quarantined, I understand the frustration because I was there. <laughs> At Coldwater School Board meeting last night. There are two sides to this, and all we're asking for is choice. Most in the audience spoke out against a possible mandate. If you can show us legitimate, concrete numbers and evidence that it works, we'll go along with it. But it isn't out there. Coldwater's Board of Education president says the board will review the results of the survey before deciding on how to move forward. We have to decide what is the best option for keeping most kids in school. The school board president tells me about 300 parents in Coldwater have voted so far. He says about 53% of those are in favor of a mask mandate. 
Statewide, 65% of Michigan students are under a mandatory mask mandate in school, state health officials say. Often hear that obesity is an American epidemic in itself, and now reasons related to the pandemic are raising concerns for health professionals. The CDC says obesity has always been a serious health concern, though, affecting more than one in six children. New research shows American children and teenagers between the ages of 2 and 19 have seen a significant increase in weight gain since the pandemic began with the biggest jumps taking place in younger school-aged children and those who are already prone to obesity. The new data released this month looked at more than 432,000 children and teens. It found that obesity rates among that age range increased to 22% compared to 19% before the pandemic. School closures disrupted routines, increased stress, and less opportunity for physical activity and proper nutrition have all contributed to this trend, according to to the CDC. Seems like a lot of it is just when they're home more, they tend to snack more and tend to be in unhealthy snacks and they tend to drink more sugary beverages and things like that, just that easier access that they don't have when they're in the structure of an in-person school. Dr. Sarah Franzen says in general, doctors look for kids to gain about five pounds a year, but in the last year, she's seen more kids gaining 20 to 30 pounds. And Franzen says if we don't get a grip on this alarming trend now, children face long-term concerns like diabetes and heart disease. She encourages parents to start small, working with their kids to make changes, such as trying to not eat out as much, lim limiting those sugary beverages, and implementing some form of exercise every day.